COVID-19. Leave no one behind. Coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that cause illness, ranging from the common cold to more severe lung diseases. COVID-19 is the most recently discovered disease caused by coronavirus. As we fight this pandemic, we must be kind by supporting others. COVID-19 is not specific to any sex, gender, race, nationality, or skin color. So, let us not stigmatize or discriminate against anyone or certain groups. Fear of exclusion and discrimination may result in those who may have contracted COVID-19, including migrants, to hide their symptoms rather than seek treatment. This puts everyone at risk of getting sick. In many contexts, people who migrate to work, study, or join their families are key players in nation building, including combating COVID-19. Let us all play our role in challenging misinformation and discrimination against migrants. Be considerate of others' needs and do what you can to help. Encourage others to wash their hands frequently. Avoid touching their face, eyes, mouth, and nose. Practice proper cough etiquette. Avoid public places. Practice social distancing and stay at home if they feel unwell. The Gambia is called the Smiling Coast because its people are kind. Let's show that kindness in fighting COVID-19, our common enemy. Let's fight it together. For more information or if you experience any symptoms, dial 1025. Your only suitable solution for quality meat for you and your family consumption. Our comprehensive range of meat products include minced meat, beef slices, top side, knuckle, rump steak, silver side, tenderloin, strip loin, and four quarter. We offer consistent value, quality, and service through animals grass fed and bred, especially for their meat. This makes the meat much more tasty, succulent, tender, and easy to cook. All meats at Majilik Butchers are halal, including for the first time in the Gambia, the new Mongolian whole lamb, available only at Majilik Butchers. Rush now and visit Majilik Butchers on Karaba Avenue, opposite the Petrogas petrol station traffic lights. For inquiries and orders, please call 7688-688. That is 7688-688. Majilik Butchers the home of quality meat and chicken products at unbeatable prices. Sorry, I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? Baluo? What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about the exchange rates. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. Hi, my name is Buba Gajigo and you're watching Kerfatu. This is your educational program and we're gonna bring you junior school lessons. Get your kids prepared by giving them pen, pencil, or a book. I hope you'll enjoy these lessons. Are you 
thinking of owning your dream homes? EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three or four bedrooms or our story buildings, three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Sea View Estate where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, solar panel and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220. Or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. With whatever we do, Dion and Safu no la with whatever we do. Halay the moon is cool, Nepam ne could look cool, Nepangi ragala gay, na, Nepam ne could look cool. Ibulo can no more to Nibeti sola. Ibulo can not to Nibeto. Bingy! Eh, eh, Bingy go. Lamin! No? Nah. Je ne sais pas si tu es un homme. 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 Tu Ah, 
Ni Hello, viewers and listeners. Uh, welcome back to your another presentation on science. I'm your usual presenter, Mr. Ibrahima Jadama. And as usual, we continue on our presentation on salts. The other time we started salts, but it wasn't completed. So today, I'm sure we are going to complete the topic on salts today and start a fresh topic. Okay, so let's go straight there and see where we stop and continue from there. If you can remember very well, we stopped at type of salts from our previous discussion on salts, type of salts. And today that's where we are going to continue from and proceed. At, I hope so you are able to remember other important things about salts that we uh, discuss here, most especially the definition of salts and also how to name salts. If you can remember the definition of salt, what is a salt? We said here a salt is a substance that is produced when all or part of the replaceable hydrogen atoms of an acid are replaced by a metal or a metallic radical, example, ammonium radical. That's how we define salt. So don't forget that definition, please, from today. Um, also look at how to name salts, name of salts. If you can remember that also, how do we say, do we name salts? We said here to name salts, we look at two things. We look at the metal uh, that come from the base to form the salt, and also the acid that combine with the metal to form a particular salt. So in naming any particular salt, you name the metal from the base and also um, uh, the uh, acid that the salt, uh, uh, sorry, base combine with. For example, let me just go over that here. Example, we have a salt here called sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. How do you come to name this salt? We simply name this salt by naming the metal first. The metal 
which is the sodium, and also the chlorine, which comes from the acid, that is, which is HCl. So therefore, we take the metal from the base and also the chloride from the hydrochloric acid to name this particular salt called sodium chloride. If you take an example of, let's say, calcium carbonate, how do you come to name this salt? It's simple, again. We look at the metal. Good. This is the metal part of the salt. Where does this carbonate come from? It comes from the acid. And which acid is that? That acid is carbonic acid. So therefore, we name the metal calcium and the carbonate from the carbonic acid. We have calcium carbonate. So this is how you name a salt, please. <coughs> so always try to remember these points and master them, please. So today, <coughs> we are going to look at type of salts already, as I mentioned. So the first type of salts we look at is called normal salt. Remember, salts are also divided into different types based on how they were formed. So we are going to look at that. We have mainly four types of salts. We have what is called normal salt or neutral salt. We have what are called uh, acid salts. We have what are called basic salts. We have what are called uh, double salts. So we are going to look at each of these types of salts with their examples and how they are formed. Please. So as you see from the screen there, the first type of salt that we got there is what is called a normal salt. And normal salts are also at times called neutral salts. Why are they given that name normal or neutral salt? These are simply some of the reasons. Because one, they do not contain a replaceable hydrogen ion. They don't have no hydrogen ion in them again anymore. Four, uh, two, they are formed by the reaction of a strong acid and a strong base, or a weak acid and a weak base. Good. Before I proceed here, you have, I have to give you this term here so that you may understand what we are coming to talk about here. What is called basicity. Every acid has what is called basicity. And what is a basicity of the acid? Basicity. As you remember here, each acid contains hydrogen atoms or ions. So when you say basicity, this simply means the number of hydrogen atoms in one molecule of an acid. So this is what is we basically call as basicity of an acid, the number of hydrogen atoms in one molecule of an acid. Example, we have HCl, we have H2CO3, we have H3PO4. So we have different types of basicity of acids based on the number of hydrogen atoms they contain. If an acid has only one hydrogen atom, it will be monobasic meaning it have one replaceable hydrogen atom, monobasic. If an acid contains two replaceable hydrogen atoms, we call it as dibasic. And again, if an acid contains three replaceable hydrogen atoms, like phosphoric acid, we call it as what? Tri, tribasic. So now, during the formation of salts, normally, Sometimes, all these hydrogen atoms in the acid will be replaced. But at times, uh, all of them are not replaced. Part of it are replaced, part of it remain in the acid. This is why you come to have this different type of salts. So now let's go back to the discussion proper. Normal salts, how are they formed? Or neutral salts? See, they are formed oh, because they do not contain any replaceable hydrogen ions, like HCl. It doesn't have any replaceable. So in order to understand uh, about type of salts, we have to understand one thing about basicity. What is basicity? We said this is the number of replaceable, replaceable hydrogen atoms in one molecule of an acid. There are some acids 
that have only one replaceable hydrogen atom, like HCl, hydrochloric acid. Some acids have two replaceable hydrogen atoms, that is uh, carbonic acid. Some acids have three replaceable hydrogen atoms, like phosph uh, phosphoric acid. For hydrochloric acid, we call it monobasic because it has only one replaceable hydrogen atom. For carbonic acid, it could be diabasic because it has two replaceable hydrogen atoms. Likewise, um, phosphoric acid is tribasic because it has um, three replaceable hydrogen atoms. So now, during the formation of salts, when these particular acids react with the base, sometimes all these hydrogen atoms will be replaced by the metal from the base. Sometimes, only part of it are replaced. Some parts are remain, uh, remain in the acid. So this um, comes to give us a different type of salts. Please. So now, whenever an acid, uh, a base is it's like sulf, uh, hydrochloric acid, we are going to have a normal salt like sodium chloride. Why? Because from the acid, hydrochloric acid, all the hydrogen atoms are being replaced. So therefore, that gives us a product called sodium chloride. It does not contain any replaceable hydrogen atom that can make it an acid, uh, give it a, some acidic property. So therefore, it's a normal salt, please. So um, remember that important point there about normal salts. They do not uh, contain any replaceable hydrogen ions. And secondly, they are formed by the reaction of a strong acid and a strong base, or a weak acid and a weak base, please. So there are some of the examples of normal salts or neutral salts. Take note of them. We have potassium chloride, which, which is KCl. We have sodium chloride, as I just named here, sodium chloride, NaCl. We have silver nitrate. There's a formula there, AgNO3. We have zinc sulfate, ZnSO4, sodium sulfate, Na2, SO4, sodium carbonate, Na2, CO3. So basically, these are examples of normal salts, simply because they do not contain any replaceable hydrogen atoms. One can say all their hydrogen atoms we have been replaced by the metal from the base. And normally, again, they are formed by the reaction of a strong acid and a strong base, or a weak acid and a weak base. So we proceed. We have the second type of salts that are called acid salt. Acid salt. And what may explain again what are acid salts? We say acid salts do not contain, or sorry, contains a replaceable hydrogen ions. So this is simply reason, in fact, they are acidic because they still contain a replaceable hydrogen ion. That means during their reaction, not all their hydrogen atoms will have been replaced by the metal. So in the long run, they still have a remaining or some remaining hydrogen ions in their solution. And secondly, they are formed by the reaction of a strong acid and a weak base. To form a strong, a, an acid salt, you have to react a strong acid with a weak base. That will give you an acid salt. So there are the examples you are seeing about acid salts. We have sodium hydrogen sulfate, NaHSO4, as you see the name there now. NaHSO4. Why is this regarded as an acid salt? It's simply because it still contains a replaceable hydrogen atom. That still gives it some acidic property, the, the hydrogen atom there. So therefore, it's an acid salt. We have calcium hydrogen carbonate still. Calcium hydrogen HCO3 and 2. Calcium hydrogen carbonate is an acid salt. Why? Simply still contain a replaceable hydrogen atom that make it an acid salt. We have potassium hydrogen carbonate, KHCO3. It's an acid salt. Why? It contains a replaceable hydrogen atom. We have NaHCO3, sodium hydrogen carbonate. It's an acid salt. Why? 
because it still contains a replaceable hydrogen atom. Please, so take note of those examples of acid salts and know how they are formed. They are formed by the reaction of a strong acid and a weak base, and they contain a replaceable hydrogen ion or replaceable hydrogen ions. The third type of salt is called basic salt, as you see from the screen. I repeat, basic salt. And how are basic salts formed? Basic salts are formed by the reaction of a weak acid and a strong base. Please, basic salts are formed by the reaction of a weak acid and a strong base. So look at the example there is sodium ethanoid. Sodium ethanoid. CH3 COO N A. And why is it here a basic salt? Because still it has a metallic atom there, which is sodium. That gives it the basic property, please. So therefore term it as a basic salt. Please. So that's also an example of basic salt. Let's move. We have the fourth type of salt is called double salt or double salt. From the name they are double. Double salt. How they are formed? They are formed by the reaction of two distinct salts. This is why we give it the name double salts. Because two different types of salts combine to produce a double salt. So example of double salts, as you see from the skin, there is potassium magnesium chloride. Potassium magnesium chloride is a double salt. The other example is calcium magnesium carbonate. We have potassium magnesium chloride um, with the water there. We have calcium magnesium carbonate. So these salts here are termed as double salts. Why? Because two different types of salts are combining here. If you look at here, this is potassium magnesium. So potassium chloride, magnesium chloride. Give you mag potassium magnesium chloride. We have calcium magnesium carbonate. So two dis dif different types of salts combined to give this double salts, please. So those are the various different types of salts, please. Always try to remember them. First, we have normal salts or neutral salts. Second, we have acid salts. Third, we have basic salts. And fourthly, we have double salts. And try to know how they are formed and their various examples, please. So we may proceed if that is understood. Okay, let's look at another very important idea there. The test for hydrogen. As we always mention, mention this gas here all the time in our discussions about acids, ga uh, hydrogen gas. We mention here that when metals combine or react with acids, a gas is produced that is called hydrogen gas. And how do we confirm that this particular gas is hydrogen gas? We have to do some testing. And the test for hydrogen gas is a very simple test. So you are seeing it um, on the screen there. There is a simple laboratory test to see if a gas is hydrogen. And what is that test? It's very simple. It says a lighted wooden splint goes pop if it is put in the test tube of hydrogen. This is because the flame ignites the hydrogen, which burns explosively to make a loud sound. So that's a very simple test for hydrogen, to test any gas, whether it's hydrogen or not. Just take a lighted splint, that is a small wooden uh, stick, with some little amount of fire on it, and then insert it into a test tube that contains the gas. The lighter splint will pop up, will produce a sound that is called a pop sound. It's an explosion sort of. That is, that's why we call it a pop sound. That will confirm to you that the particular gas is hydrogen gas, please. So try to remember that also, test for hydrogen gas. So we may proceed, if that is understood also. Good. Now, we are going to look at preparation of salts. Preparation of salts. What are the various methods that we can use to prepare salts? 
So you are seeing some of the processes in front of you in the screen. Preparation of salts. Good. So now, to prepare salts, we have to take two things into consideration. We have to look at the solubility of the salts. There are two types of salts based on their solubility. We have what are called soluble salts, and we have what are called insoluble salts. Soluble salts, why? Because they can dissolve in water. This is why they are given the name soluble salts, like sodium chloride, magnesium sulfate, calcium chloride, copper sulfate, copper nitrate. They are soluble in water. They can dissolve in water. Other salts are insoluble. They cannot dissolve in water. So that being the case, we use different methods to prepare the two different types of salts based on their solubility. Now we are going to start with soluble salts first. How do we prepare soluble salts? So acids, sorry, soluble salts can be prepared by the following methods. Soluble salts can be prepared by the following methods. One is reaction of metals with acids. So you have to remember all these points now here. Yeah? We have discussed most of this now already. The action of metals with acid. What example can we give there? Let's give an example of this sodium, which is a metal, combined with an acid that is called hydrochloric acid. And this will give you a product called sodium chloride, which is a salt. And hydrogen gas is produced. That's what we just mentioned here already, how to test for hydrogen gas. All right. You may also have, like zinc is a metal, it combined with H2SO4, that is sulfuric acid. This will give you a particular salt called zinc sulfate. Zinc sulfate. And then hydrogen gas is produced. So one way to prepare salts is to re react a metal with an acid, and you'll have a salt. I hope that is understood. Two, reaction of metals with carbonates. Another, another method to prepare soluble salts in this case, is reaction of metal carbonates with acids. Good. What are metal carbonates? For example, still let's say sodium hydrogen carbonate or sodium carbonate, Na2CO3. Plus, let's say the same, give the same acid here, HCl. Still, this is going to give us the same salt, sodium chloride, and then hydrogen gas. So this is a metal carbonate. It's a metal carbonate. It react with an acid to produce a salt. So that is another method to prepare soluble salts. The action of metal carbonates with acids. Number three, reaction of metal oxides with acids. Another method to prepare soluble salts is to react metal oxides with acids. That will also give you a product called Salt. One example of a metal oxide, let's say calcium oxide. This is a metal oxide. If it reacts with an acid, let's say sulfuric acid, it will give you a salt called calcium sulfate, CaSO4, and then hydrogen gas is released or liberated. So therefore now, we react with a, sorry, a metal oxide with an acid and have a salt called calcium sulfate there when we react calcium oxide with sulfuric acid. So that's another way to prepare soluble salts, please. Reaction of metal oxides with acids. The number four, reaction of acid with an alkali. And not alkalis. We say alkalis are soluble bases. And this is, process is called vitrolysis, please. One example of a, an alkali here we give is sodium hydroxide, NaOH. It's a soluble alkali. Sorry, it's a soluble base. It's an alkali. So if it combine with an acid, let's since give here SO4, this will give us a salt, sodium and sulfate. Sodium sulfate, Na2, SO4, then plus water here in this case, plus water. Okay, so a metal, sorry, an alkali plus an acid will also give a 
salt. So that's another, another method used to prepare soluble salts. The final step there, step five, is evaporation. And what is evaporation? You have learned about uh, evaporation already when you talk about change of state of matter, if you can remember that. What is evaporation? Evaporation is the process in which a liquid change into a what? A vapor. It's called evaporation. So when you have a solution of a particular salt, or a solution of a particular acid with a particular uh, metal oxide, so you can evaporate it, and then the end result will be salt. If the water evaporates, your solvent evaporates, it will leave behind the salt particles. That process is called evaporation. So these are the five steps we use in preparation of soluble salts. Remember them always. I just go over them if, uh, once more. First is reaction of metals with acids. Two, reaction of metal carbonates with acids. Three, reaction of metal oxides with acids. Four, reaction of acid with an alkali. And then uh, fifth, evaporation, please. So take note of these five methods that we can use to prepare soluble salts in case you are asked any time, write down or list or mention three or four methods of preparing soluble salts. From today, you should be able to do that. Let's look at another part of preparing salts. Here we are going to look at preparation of insoluble salts. This means salts that do not dissolve in water or that cannot dissolve in water. Example of this type of salts is lead carbonate. Lead carbonate, PbCO3. We have lead chloride. Lead chloride, PbCl2. We have calcium sulfate. Calcium sulfate. The next thing we have now, or the next part of preparation of salts, is called preparation of insoluble salts. Preparation of insoluble salts, meaning salts that cannot dissolve in water or that do not dissolve in water. Example of these salts is lead carbonate, PbCO3, lead chloride, PbCl2, calcium sulfate. All these are examples of insoluble salts. And how do we prepare this type of salts that do not dissolve in water. The process is simple. We say insoluble salts are prepared by mixing together solutions of two soluble salts. Solutions of two soluble salts, each containing the ions of the required salt. The required insoluble salt is precipitated. Is precipitated. It means it, it forms particles that settle down uh, in the container. The precipitate is filtered Wash with distilled water to obtain a pure insoluble salt. This process is called precipitation, as you just see the word there, precipitate. precipitate. So the process of making insoluble salts is called precipitation, whereby you mix together two insoluble salts together, and therefore they will form a precipitate. You can afterwards evaporate the precipitate by heating it, and then you have the crystals of the salt left behind. So example given there is, Lead nitrate react with sodium carbonate to produce lead carbonate and then also sodium nitrate. So the lead carbonate there is an insoluble salt, please. Lead carbonate is an insoluble salt prepared by mixing together two soluble salts. Lead nitrate is soluble, sodium carbonate is soluble. So the combined, they will form a precipitate and the precipitate is evaporated to obtain the lead carbonate. That's a method of preparing insoluble salts, please. So take, note, so take note of that. Good. The next thing we have is test of practical, but unfortunately today we cannot um, uh, do that because of time constraint, but we leave that aside for the next lesson where we will go into uh, some of the practicals concerning acid bases and salts, please. But b before we end the lesson, we have to test our understanding of the various <coughs> ideas that we have learned um, through the lesson, please. Okay? So let's look at that quickly and move on. So let's test ourselves with some of these questions here about acid bases and salts quickly before we end the lesson. Uh, the number one question is, which of the following substances is a salt? The options given there are A, HCl, B, CaCl2, calcium chloride, and C, H2SO4, D, NaOH. The simple answer there is B, calcium chloride is a salt. So please, 
Number two, all the following are assets except. No, I don't plan that for this one. Maybe for the next lesson. All the following are assets except HCL, NAOH, H2SO, 4, HNO, 3. Say all the following are assets except what? Still, the answer is option B, NAOH, sodium hydroxide is a base, it's not an acid. Number three, a reaction between an acid and a base is called what? A reaction between an acid and a base is called an endothermic reaction, B, synthesis reaction, C, acidic reaction, and D, neutralization reaction. The answer is D, neutralization reaction. For which of the following is not an organic acid? Sulfuric acid, amino acid, palmitic acid, ascorbic acid. Which of them is not an organic acid? The answer is A, sulfuric acid. <coughs> Number five, the products of the reaction between an acid and a base are what? A, salt and base, B, base and water, C, salt and water, and D, water and carbon dioxide. The simple answer is C, salt and water, please. Which of the following is not a base? Question number six, which of the following is not a base? Hydrochloric acid, sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. The answer is A. Hydrochloric acid, please. It's not a base, but all the rest are bases. Which of the following is not an inorganic acid? Question seven. Which of the following is not an inorganic acid? Carbonic acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, amino acid. The answer is amino acid. The rest are all inorganic. Amino acid is an organic acid. Eight. Which of the following substances will turn red litmus paper blue? Which of the following substances will turn red litmus paper blue? A, sodium chloride solution, B, hydrochloric acid, C, sodium hydroxide, D, sulfuric acid. So, so which of them will turn red litmus paper blue? The answer is C, sodium hydroxide, which is a base, please. Number nine, which of the following is not a salt? Which of the following is not a salt? Calcium chloride, sodium chloride, Sodium sulfate, nitric acid. So from the name, they are nitric acid. That will show you that it's not a salt. So the rest are all salts. The answer there is D, nitric acid is not a salt, it's an acid. Number 10, which of the following is neutral to litmus? Is neutral to litmus. A, sodium hydroxide. B, HCl, hydrochloric acid. C, water, that's H2O. And D, H2SO4, that is sulfuric acid. Which of them have no effect on litmus? That means neutral. The answer is, can you guess that C is the answer, H2O, that is water, is neutral. Number 11, zinc metal reacts with sulfuric acid to produce a gas called, zinc metal reacts with sulfuric acid to produce a gas called what? Oxygen, chlorine, hydrogen, carbon dioxide. The answer is hydrogen, please. All metals or most metals react with acids to produce hydrogen gas. Don't forget that concept. So, so far so good. We're going to end the lesson here today on salts. And thank you for your wonderful attention, please. So the next time we meet, we continue from where we stop. But don't forget always to revise your books at home, please. Um, you leave your book for one day, it leave, leave you for two days. So don't always forget your books at home. Always remember your notes and try to read at any time. I thank you for, for your kind attention. Thank you. Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities 
all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gumsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gumsel, Yaibarom. Code 56 branches more of the Gambia. Ah, ha. Gambia Kono and in Gambia Bantala Banko, Unka Kodo Kia Beret. Kodo Sifa Sifa for Falindiro Fonya, the left amendment of Kodito Koton in Kodimaro, Janum number one in Yonda. And Nun for another another enterprise is Sotan. Golam Nintuko, Domoro Fanan Kol Fan and Dave Fira, the Daddy Man in Domoro Fanny Betia. Gambia Dowda Yalom of Fakindol Sotan. Ha, eh, one more ha. A parent of Gambia left a yell and candle every night. Yale Bukanil of Wall, a work of Yalon del Chosano. A work. Gamtel G Fiber, now you can enjoy super fast internet in gigabytes. G Fiber is affordable, stable, secured, and accessible to homes, businesses, and enterprises. With Gamtel G Fiber, the future is speed. Gamtel, creating a brighter future in communication. Boy, Janno Circus Restaurant. Yes, I know who be Nina Dimba. Nimba Domoro Kara Janno. Domoro Seneata Adiata Topotoro Fanan Kendama Bije. Luntan During Tamala Abeka Domoro Kijani. Adi Manda Walade. Take away Bijele and Infanan Kafa Dijang Ukonoefa. Eka Minoko Pestri and in Bakery. 
iko fana mbe kalel ba de lomba conference lomba workshop lomba ye fo fe ni lo dunia kono domoro betama ni lo international o tewoda number 1 amanke ba do mala jang dama e sa do mo jang e sa atari ya a wo mu kuba ndi sa na ko sa futan din e oto sa na ko be mu sikes restaurant ndaba na jang na mu yat ni manje do rombi jang aban sikes restaurant known for best quality food and customer satisfaction Thank you.